Hi, this is Kayla Heyer and Kate Olenich, and we will be presenting on Cruzon syndrome. Cruzon syndrome is an autosomal dominant disorder of familial or spontaneous origin. It is a skeletal dysplasia characterized by early suture closure, with the frontal suture being first, and premature fusion of the synchondroses of the skeletal base. The specific mutation involved in Cruzon syndrome is in fibroblast growth factor receptor 2 on chromosome 10. This abnormality affects the first branchial arch, which adversely leads to maxilla and mandible defects. Symptoms associated with Cruzon syndrome include potential blindness, social polarity, and mental retardation, among others. Cruzon syndrome is clinically identifiable at birth and therefore requires little symptomatic investigation. However, there are many symptoms associated with Cruzon syndrome. Blindness is caused as a result of craniosynostosis, resulting in shallow orbits, maladaptive thought processes, anxiety, fear, difficulty adapting and coping, and overall social anxiety are all social symptoms that may be experienced. The main concern of physicians overseeing the social well-being of patients with Cruzon syndrome is to help them make the best of their situation. 12% of Cruzon syndrome patients will be diagnosed with mental retardation as a result of craniofacial de deformities becoming more prominent with time. The most noticeable clinical sign of Cruzon syndrome is craniosynostosis, which is the inappropriate union of bones or parts of bones. Typically, the craniosynostosis presents more specifically as brachiocephaly, which is fusion of the coronal suture. Brachycephaly causes the clinical appearance of a short skull from front to back. Cruzon patients also present with hypertelarism, which is increased distance between eyes, giving a frog-like appearance, orbital proptosis, which is protruding eyes, resulting in shallow orbits, hypoplastic maxilla, V-shaped maxillary arch, overcrowding or widely spaced maxillary upper teeth, cleft palate, bifid uvula, and deviation of the nasal septum are all very probable clinical findings in a patient with Cruzon syndrome. One in every 25,000 live births worldwide results in a child with Cruzon syndrome. However, in the United States, only one in 60,000 live births result in a Cruzon syndrome diagnosis. The article did not explain why the precedence of Cruzon syndrome is much less in the United States versus worldwide. 3 to 56 percent of these births are caused by a spontaneous mutation, while the remaining percent are a result of familial origin. The male to female preponderance is 3 to 1. Cruzon syndrome accounts for 4.8 percent of all cases of craniosynostosis, which is the highest of all craniosystosal syndromes. The radiographic findings for Cruzon syndrome are as follows. The location is generalized generalized throughout the skull. Edge is well defined at sutures throughout the skull. Shape, linear at sutures in addition to other generalized cranial defects. Internal structure does not apply. Other structures, structures within the cranium may be adversely affected. For example, the brain and eyes. Number, multiple, potentially single depending on the case, but typically generalized throughout the skull. Size is inconsistent, can be small or large depending on the case. The growing brain leaves prominent cranial markings due to increased cranial pressure. This results in depressions that appear as small radiolucencies on the inner surface of the cranial vault. This is referred to as a beaten metal appearance. An ultrasound or 3D image of the fetus may be helpful in early diagnosis and treatment. The differential interpretation of Cruzon syndrome includes Apert syndrome, seether chosen syndrome, and jackson wise syndrome. Apert syndrome is included in the differential interpretation because of its similar clinical features. Brachycephaly with shortened anterior-posterior diameter, hypoplastic midface, hypertelarism, and proptosis. Different from patients with Cruzon syndrome, patients with Apert syndrome present with some mental impairment. Impacted teeth, delayed eruption and ectopic eruption, as well as supernumerary teeth and calcification of the styloid process are common radiographic findings in Apert syndrome. It can be distinguished from Cruzon syndrome if the patient presents with neurological defects, syndactyly, and the fusion of cervical vertebrae. 
Jackson-Weiss syndrome is included because it is a common cranial synostosis which is also caused by a fibroblast growth factor receptor mutation. Clinically, there are no signs of neurological defects. However, hypertelorism, proptosis, mid-face hypoplasia, hypoplasia of the maxilla, and acrocephaly are seen. It can be distinguished from Cruzon syndrome by its associated foot anomalies, which include a broad and medially deviated great toe, partial cutaneous syndactyly of second and third toes, and broad and short metatarsals. Sealer chosen is included in the differential interpretation because clinically it is very similar to the other craniosynostosis syndromes. Some features include unilateral or bilateral coronal synostosis, ptosis, low set ears, hearing loss, hypertelorism, maxillary hypoplasia, deviated nasal septum, broad great toes, clinodactyly, and syndactyly. Seether Chosen syndrome is differentiated from the other craniosynostosis syndromes based upon genetic mutations found in the TWIST1 gene, which is important in the development of the head and limbs. There is no single treatment option for Cruzon syndrome. Rather, successful treatment requires ample planning amongst multiple disciplines and would most likely be conducted in different stages. The goal is to stage reconstruction to coincide with facial growth patterns, visceral function, and psychosocial development. When developing a plan, the most important considerations should be prevention of increasing intracranial pressure and protecting the eyes. For this, a general dentist would want to refer the patient to a neurosurgeon as soon as possible. Depending on the severity of the case, the neurosurgeon may choose craniectomy or placement of a shunt to drain CSF. He or she may also need to develop a plan for skull reshaping as a child ages. Once the risk to the developing brain has been taken care of, there are a few options to change facial abnormalities as well as occlusal discrepancies. If maxillary hypoplasia is severe, maxillary advancement via Lafort surgery is an option. For this procedure, the patient is referred to an oral surgeon. Orthodontic treatment is another option to help with both aesthetics and occlusal function. For this, the patient would see an orthodontist. In summary, Cruzon syndrome is characterized by possible symptoms of blindness, social stigmas, and in rare cases, mental retardation, as a result of craniosynostosis. Clinically, Cruzon syndrome presents with brachycephaly, hypertelorism, and orbital proptosis. Cruzon syndrome is characterized radiographically by signs of cranial suture fusion, which includes sclerosis and overlapping edges. Sutures that would normally be visible radiographically are no longer evident. Diminished facial growth may also be noticed radiographically. The maxilla will usually appear hypoplastic, and the mandible, though it is typically smaller than normal in patients with cruzon, will appear prognathic in relation to the hypoplastic maxilla. Prominent cranial markings may also be noted. Increased intracranial pressures cause these impressions to be left on the cranial vault by the developing brain. The impressions appear as multiple radiolucencies and give the cranial vault a beaten metal appearance. There is no single treatment option for Cruzon syndrome. Rather, ample planning amongst multiple disciplines is required for a successful treatment. The most important considerations should be to protect the developing brain by preventing increased intracranial pressure as well as to protect the eyes. For this, a general dentist would want to refer the patient to a neurosurgeon as soon as possible. Maxillary hypoplasia may require maxillary advancement via Lafort surgery performed by an oral surgeon. Orthodontic treatment is another option to help with both aesthetics and occlusal function. The patient would be referred to an orthodontist to enhance aesthetics as well as to improve any occlusal discrepancies. Here are our resources for this presentation as well as our image credits. Thank you.